What's up everyone, this is Arn Anderson and welcome to another video. This one is going to be pretty exciting, I think, because I'm going to do something I've never done before. And we're talking about synthesis, as a lot of you guys might know from my email on Saturday. Because we just released our pre-sale of the Cinematic Synthesis course by the amazing Big Jer. And before going into the development phase of this course, I have been clueless about since my entire life. Because every time I've been opening a synth before, if I've see, been seeing this kind of stuff, I've been just incredibly intimidated. I haven't been having any idea what to do, what these things mean, what a noise oscillator is, how to use an LFO, or any of that stuff. But now after going through the course myself, things have been falling into place. And in this video, I want to just make like three to four sounds and create this little eight bar loop just to give you a little taste of what is possible to achieve after going through this course when you know nothing about synth going in. So without further ado, let's make some sounds. What I have going here is just four tracks, like one for the bass, it's all just initialized presets and serum, like one for the pluck, one for the Brahmish effect I'm gonna make, and one for the background atmosphere. And um, I don't have any external effects on it. I just have I just hired mom up here to make sure there's no clipping and everyone is behaving. And um, that's it. So let's have a look at what we're going to make. Something like that. Just made super fast. So now let's just delete everything and pretty much start from scratch and make something along the same lines. And what I want to do is I want to start with the little pluck. This is kind of um, a little tense, repeated pulsing pluck along the lines of something Hans Zimmer is using a lot in his soundtracks like in Dunkirk and in A Dark Knight. So that's where I got that inspiration from. So we're going to have the initialized preset. So I'm going to be pulling a hand simmer and play in D, which is just going to be the note, uh, I mean the key S on my keyboard on my MacBook, because I'm right now visiting my parents in Norway, I'm sitting in the living room, I don't have any of my equipment here, so I'm just using what I have to create something. So now a pluck, right. So the first thing I'm going to do before tweaking anything is to try to just get this kind of pulsing effect. So I'm going to pull this over here, maybe something like that I think and then I need it to be faster and I'm gonna automate the volume here already we got a pluck super easy but this is just a default wave so I'm gonna get something that's a little bit more fancy let's see here Like that, that's a bit mellow and nice. Let's see what else we have here. Oh yeah, need to make sure this is on all of them, including the sub, which I'm probably gonna use. And I guess also here. Like that, okay, cool. Now let's just find some kind of sine wave here. Maybe that, let's see, yeah, I'm gonna make this a little bit, add some more bite to it, and also what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this down to semitones, to get that kind of hand simmerish tense feeling going on. Let's see what we can do here, I'm gonna... Alright, I'm gonna probably add some automation to that. Some modulation, I mean. Give it some more bite. Uh, yeah, it seems to be the sweet spot. Mm. It's 
something like this. Gonna apply some filter here. Probably gonna give it a little bit of modulation. Give it a bit more attack. And then I want to assign this um, this little knob here so I can automate things later to the filter too. So I can open it. Something like that. I'm gonna just write filter. Alright, it's so already starting to get somewhere. Let's add a little sub. I want to make sure we got automation here. Yeah, just super light. I'm, I, that's just going to be there. Filling out the sound a little bit, I think. That's not too bad. Maybe I can try the... some more attack to it with some white noise. I'm actually starting to get not too far away from something that sounds pretty good here. I'm gonna add, go to the effects, make it a little bit wider. Add a little bit of that. Uh, let's see, maybe some distortion. A little bit of this. Just give it some more presence and a bite. Now, let's see what else can I add. Maybe a little bit um the no, not delay. making it a little bit more cohesive. Maybe a little bit of reverb, that's always nice. Not too much. Free delay. I like that. And this is also something, whoops. Where were we? There we were. I like to add some automation to this EQ in here because that's going to really give it some interesting texture. a bit more focused. Do the same over here. Yeah, that's just holding everything a bit together and then just a little bit of that, add some drive to it. So assign this filter here a little bit so I can open it. I like that. And now I'm just going to check the levels here a little bit. I like that. I think that's pretty cool for now. Um, I just want to quickly add a little bit of this LFO to some panning here. This one too. Maybe this one even. That's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna record like a little eight bar thing here. And 
and I'm too lazy, so I'm just gonna drag this over here, zoom out a little bit. As you might notice, I'm actually in Ableton Live now, which is probably the first time you've ever seen me use anything else on Cubase. And don't be alarmed, it's just because I don't. I think I lost my license today, like my license key for Cubase, and I just happen to also have Ableton, which I've been using for a bit of sound design and things. Um, but don't don't be alarmed. I'm gonna be back in Cubase very soon. All right, that's cool. Let's also add a little bit of like automation here to add some movement. We can tweak this later, but whoops, whoops. So this very subtle. Let's see. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, things that are evolving there. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to um, making like a little background atmosphere before we move over to creating a cool little pulse base. So again, like always, just gonna initialize the preset. We've got the standard little saw wave going on here. Um, so for this, we're going to try to create a little mellow pad, all right? I'm gonna take this up an octave. I'm immediately gonna take off the high end. I'm gonna maybe just apply some reverb just from the get go. Um, plate, massive size, no pre delay. It's a lot of reverb for now. Because that, that's like an important part of the sound, in my opinion, right now. Um, I'm gonna go to maybe some funky little things here. These are. Something like this. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna set it like over here. Well, something that's evolving. Let's see if I can add some. Yeah, adds a little bit of motion to it, but um, so a symmetry. Also, add some um, things that are moving a little bit here. It makes it evolve a little bit. Yeah, something along those lines. Off a little bit. And I'm gonna add the sub, which is gonna be. So it's just gonna be super low. I'm gonna make that and a little bit back and forth. Maybe add an octave over actually. Now let's head over here. Oh, that's intense. Uh, Sure, everything is going through the filter here. And drive to it. Okay, I'm gonna maybe um, go for something like something like that here. Maybe add some asymmetry to that as well. Maybe try that. Get it up an octave. Some automation. Now this is gonna be a very, very like mellow sound. But what I want to do, I, it's a little bit boring. So I want to use this, and I want to. I think I'm gonna add it to maybe here. Yes, that's more like it. Heck yeah. So now I'm just gonna go over to here, add some more effects. So the delay going. Ping pong, so it's jumping back and forth. 
maybe making the EQ evolve a little bit. Um, this. Maybe make this go up and down a little bit, adding some motion here. Something like that, and I'm just gonna record this too. Or actually, um, I think I can just copy this over here because it's the same note. And um, actually, what I want to do, I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna call this atmosphere too. And I'm gonna um, do a little tip, a little thing I've been doing it lately. But I've been making something like this, and I want it to be even more full and interesting. I let's see here. Maybe just change the waveform. So much going on here. Rid of that, maybe change the waveform here. Now we're gonna get even more of a tense effect. All right, let's move on to the pulse bass, which is one of my favorites to make these days. Um, let's see, open serum, initialize preset. So this one is going to be fairly low. I'm going to go take down the octaves, set up the LFO kind of like, um, what should be the 16s, I guess. Nope, that way. Yes. Something like that. Um, a little sine wave. Sure, that one is automated too. Sick. All right, let's move on to. Yeah, I like the sine wave. Front street here. So we can add some motion. And this is pretty cool. Like already within like I don't know thirty seconds, I pretty much have a usable sound that I can use. This is a. Whole space. So that's a cool thing when you're learning the basics of how everything works. You can quickly just set up these things and you're good to go. Everything else is just like a bonus on top of that. So speaking of bonuses, let's add a little more interesting stuff going on here. Some bytes. Uh, let's see what we can do with the filter here. Some nice little pulsing going on. I like it. I like that. Um, let's add another oscillator. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Making this automate the levels. And um I think we might be doing something interesting here, let me see. Out. This one also needs to go at least like that. Oh yeah, let's add more voices here. And then actually, 
to add some more texture to that. I'm gonna add no FM from noise, maybe. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Make sure it's going through the filter to both A and B. noise only the sub and everything else maybe something like this and i also like to add the macros here just call it filter um make that automate drive to it and that's basically it on the front panel here so i am going to add a little bit of distortion always nice adding that nice little crunch there um, maybe i'll add a little thing here too, to add some more if i want to All that distortion the cool thing is you can automate this inside a daw Maybe add a little bit on each note. I dig it. Um, let's go to the EQ. Maybe add a little bit of. Something like this. Take this way. Yeah, just tighten it up a little bit and another filter here and drive. Maybe make this filter open this one a little bit too. Maybe I'm gonna add some drive to it as well. I'm just experimenting here, really. That's nice. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think we can try to maybe copy this over, put it in here with, oops, with everything else. Um, maybe add in some kind of automation here too, like we did on the block. It's like a Evolving a little bit, make it go get up here, here, and then just go all in at the ending. I think we got the um, filter here for sure. But I also want to uh, configure the, the distortion. Come on, let me do that. Maybe we can please. There we go. All right, distortion. Um, start. Low, go a little there. Yes, I'm not sure if that's gonna sound, but let's try it. Nice, it's starting to sound really cool. And this is going to really drive your cue forward if you're using it, adding some motion and rhythm to it. Now it's just time to create a little signature sound, like a kind of little brahm, and we're going to be good to go, really. So I'm gonna, again, the same spiel open up, serum, uh, let's see, initialize preset. Let's play in D. And um, we got, let's see, little brahm. This is, going to, this is going to be interesting. I think I'm going to do some pitch bending and whatnot. So let's see. That's probably one of the first, thing, first things I'm going to set up. A little envelope for the pitch. 
I know I probably would like a sub to be be going on there. Um, that would be in the meantime, Let's see what we can use here. One of these funky ones, maybe. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that can be an interesting little. Like this, maybe I will actually do FM from sub. Yeah, very subtle. Okay, I'm gonna add the other one here now. And, uh, yeah, I like this. Add some well asymmetry or something. Some movement. Um, all not a bad idea to add a little filter to. Make it open a little bit. Or actually, I think I'm gonna. Create a little custom shape in the LFO, make it start, let's see, get up, uh, need one more point, go down immediately, and then it's rice. See if I can use that on. Oh, that's not what I'm going for, it's one bar, I guess. Yeah, something like this, that's cool. Um, now let's do the pitch things here. Uh, yes, that's what I'm going for. Some delay, much Some reverb, late, no pre delay. Low EQ. Lacking some distortion. What else we can do? This one. Maybe do this one the other way. Why not? Oh, that's cool, actually. Might be too much. I think we're actually starting to get to something that can work.
see if I can uh... let's try that for now I'm gonna make it come in on like the here and here I suppose Gonna take that. There we go. I'm gonna copy that here and let's listen. Okay, we're getting there. Now the only thing left is just to hit Command K and you got... Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it could be a little helpful introduction into seeing what you can expect out of the course. Because I went into it knowing nothing, and now I'm able to make block atmospheres, some bombs, some bases fairly quick because I just understand the basics and be getting guidance um, into making these kind of cinematic sounds. So it's super easy to um, replicate this and make all kinds of sounds you can possibly imagine. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. That's a little introduction to how you can use synthesis in your tracks and what I have learned going through the course. And I hope it's been helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.